watching Barbell Shrug. Wait, no. Hey, <laughs> hey, whoa. whoa. Easy. Now, we do recommend you watch Barbell Shrugged, of yeah, course. We, we do that. We do love the, the so, show. Welcome to the first episode of GGTV. Uh, the first episode, we're going to be talking about some business stuff for CrossFit. We are here with Olivia, um, the owner, operator, and sole person that's awesome in <laughs> wildlife. Don't tell the other people in wildlife that they're not part of that awesomeness. Your husband's going to be here in a minute, right? Right. <laughs> yes. um, so, Olivia, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, kind of how you got started in the apparel company. Uh, well, I've been in the apparel business for about 10 years, and I do have another partner. Her name's Amy, um, and we have worked together in the apparel industry for, you know, about 10 years together. And we, you know, started CrossFit about four years ago and just noticed that there's really not anyone that knew CrossFit and really got, you know, what CrossFitters wanted in their apparel. And so we had some friends, you know, that were box owners that were asking us to help them out with it. And we just, you know, realized that there was really a, a big need in the industry for an apparel company. So okay, so you weren't actually CrossFitters that wanted to start an apparel company. You were an apparel company well, that started CrossFitting. Well, we've been in apparel longer than we've yeah. been CrossFitting. But okay, yeah, cool. we I didn't were know CrossFitting yeah. once we started. So it's been about three and a half, four years now. So, so backwards from the typical apparel company and CrossFit, right? Those are CrossFitters who are like, hey, let's make T-shirts. Yeah. Exactly. I like to CrossFit. Yes. I like shirts. Let's do both. Right. Yeah. So and so you noticed too that there was this amazing need because there's nobody making T shirts in CrossFit. Oh wait, that's not true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so then how how did that go? So you've got all this competition mm -hmm. in this apparel, you know, market in CrossFit. Has that been an issue for you? It's starting to become, you know, more of an issue than it was when we first started. Um, when we started, you know, there was a few big names out there. Um, and, you know, I think we were probably the one that was focusing more on the affiliate side. Our retail side came from people just really loving our logo and, and asking for more and more retail items for us to provide. Um, so, but our main focus has always been the affiliate sales. Cool. Yeah, I think that's a good, uh, a good niche that we enjoy <coughs> our partnership with you because of that. Um, it's cool. We like wildlife gear. Um, so, yeah, so uh, we're talking about that. I guess I guess we should explain since this is the first podcast. I think if people <laughs> get to this, they probably understand that mm. we're with the garage game. So, um, Dr. Eric, you kind of started the garage games. Um, yeah. I'm really nobody. Um, <laughs> and so – Sh sh you want me to introduce you? This is Justin Metz. He is the coach, head coach of the Garage Games, and he is oh, excuse me, the garage home of the Garage Games, and he is also the media director of Garage Media, Garage Games TV. Yep. And then Sweet. we have um, really the guy that's the most important would be Nick, who you're not going to see. You can't see him because he's holding <laughs> he's holding the camera. If if you've seen some of the videos, you probably recognize him as Yolanda from the X's and Y's videos. Yeah, he um, did Yolanda, which bit of trivia there's the wig right there yep that's the Yolanda wig I like it <laughs> um so how did you guys meet how did how did how did that come about how did this uh that's a great question um with the garage games obviously we're we're around now um we we, we are seeing people people are seeing us and so it was uh Ty Hansen who is the regional director of the southeast who somehow got hooked up with you guys mm -hmm. somewhere and he was like yo you need to talk to them because they want to sponsor the garage games and they want to make some garage games apparel and they want to get involved. And so that's where it all started. We, we probably emailed a few times. And yeah. Got yeah. together. We met Ty at the Pensacola Beach Brawl the yeah. first year he did that. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Pensacola Beach Brawl. Big competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're well run. Awesome venue. Yeah. <laughs> Hope to cool. be down there filming that next year. This will be the first year that we're, that we're going to film it, I think. We tried to do it this year and it just it didn't work out. But yeah. it's always, I can't wait to get on the beach the camera and get sand everywhere yeah. so um so so yeah so i guess we weren't really using we were just doing our own apparel before it's kind of a pain in the butt isn't it so, yeah like yeah. can we talk about i guess what a lot of people maybe that are wanting to start a business not necessarily a gym because those are honestly saturated you know in the in the industry right now too um you know what are the difficult things what was the most difficult piece for you trying to like break in and become, you know, an actual, you know, a piece of this cult, you know, this whole structure that, you know, that's mm -hmm. become CrossFit over the last couple of years. Well, it's interesting because you said it was, you know, that whole apparel process is a pain in the butt. And yeah. so that's really how we sell ourselves to the affiliates to help us, 
you know, work with them and get in the door. Um, we tell them, you know, we want to make the process easy for you from start to finish. We design. We have a, two graphic designers on staff. We do all our own in-house printing. Um, so it's not like you're having to fit the pieces of the puzzle together. We take everything and, and just really deliver, you know, a, an easy way to have your custom branded apparel. So, so if you were, so if somebody would came to you and say, you know, I want to start, which might be silly because it might be a competitor of yours, but <laughs> if somebody were to come to you and say, I want to start my own company um, with this, I've got a niche, I've got a really cool idea, but I honestly have no idea how to start it. Like what, what is a good piece of information that you could give them um, just starting out in a business like that, you know, just to help them kind of, you know, maybe some mistakes that you've made mm-hmm. um, that would help somebody else out? Um, we've actually had several companies come to us, and we're glad to, you know, help people get, you know, get started, even if it is a CrossFit um, apparel company, because we'd honestly like to design and print for that company as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, it's definitely been a learning process. Um, I, one thing that we've realized, especially on our retail side, is don't overwhelm the customer with a lot of different designs and a lot of different choices. You know, keep it fresh and keep it constantly evolving. So, you know, every three months or so, introduce a couple new designs um, for men and for ladies. Um, and, and, you know, don't don't just immediately have 20 different selections to choose from because then you, you really do overwhelm the customer at that point. Yeah, I think one of the coolest things that you guys do is you because you support the uh, the affiliate, you support the idea of an affiliate store, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, um, that's really cool. Uh, I like the fact that we can send back stuff to you mm-hmm. and get it changed out for some fresh stuff. You know, I'm not buying apparel from Wildlife that I'm stuck with. I'm getting a, uh, a, a just a, a, a nice inventory, and just like I, if I were a retail outlet for Gap. Uh, I'm not going to keep that same inventory on my shelves until it's gone. Exactly. Gonna, it, yeah. That's yeah, a good point. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people maybe have like, they've got a good idea for a shirt, but then that's all they've got. And they've got a certain amount of people that they're looking for. But I mean, you have to have yeah. a large amount. And yeah, I mean, it's shirts are expensive, right? So like, you're like, well, we want to do new shirts, but we got to sell the rest of these before we can do it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a big problem. I know it was, you know, one for, you know, me in the past too, just, you know, being a box owner and being like, mm-hmm. if I'm going to drop down, you know, thousands of dollars for all these shirts, like I need to get pre-orders before this happens because I'm not going to be able to do anything else afterwards. I'm going to lose money and right. it shouldn't yeah. be that. And we encourage pre-orders. I mean, we, once we create art design for our customers, we provide them with mocks that they can post on Facebook, that they can you know, post in the gym. So that way, you know, they're not left with a bunch of dead inventory that they can't sell and, you know, have that specific problem that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It really helps, you know, on their profit side, you know, to not have to worry about that. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your expansion, because you guys have done a lot of, of work to not just be a a purchaser and printer and reseller. Um, at this point, I know you're you're into the whole manufacturing side of things. So yeah. so tell us about that. How'd that happen? That's been really exciting for us. Um, you know, something that Amy and I um, we have a lot of experience in and uh so we first started our manufacturing with our shorts um, because that was the most requested item that we had um, from all of our affiliates. You know, we want shorts. All of our you know members are looking for a good CrossFit short, and so we developed those first. We have a ladies Metcon short, a men's Metcon short, and also a men's fight or board short. Which one of our coaches actually wears? Tim, Coach Tim. The ladies. Oh, the ladies. Tim wears the ladies. 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 (laughs) I don't know if we can find a picture of that. I was going to say, we may need that for Facebook. You you probably, yeah, we'll have to get that in. It's it's become a little bit infamous. He's not only the barefoot guy, but he's the barefoot guy. In the blue, tighty shorts. Basically Speedos. I think it's it's like they're boy shorts is what they are. Because he's got like these massive tree trunks for legs. And those shorts were not made for those. So maybe that's a market you could get into. Like girl shorts for for boys. For men. Yeah. 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 We definitely need a picture of that. They already did that with pants, right? Girl, a, it'd girl be, pants, a lot of the guys. It'd be a scary are. market that you'd be creating, but it might go. <laughs> it really might go. You know, just roll with it, you know? It's fine. <laughs> uh, cool. So it started with the shorts, but now you've gone beyond just manufacturing we've, shorts. Yeah, we've gone beyond that. We have our own Tri-Blend t-shirts, which, you know, everyone knows in CrossFit, Tri-Blend is the most sought-after material. Absolutely. Um, we also carry our own um, burnout tank tops, racerback tanks. Um, so those are... 
the first two items we've started with, just because those are the most requested. We probably print 90% of what we do on burnout and uh, also for Cloudland. Okay. Cool. Now, is yeah. that, I have no idea what exactly. Cloudland is. that what that is on the wall? Over my right-hand shoulder here, there's a poster. Yes. <laughs> it's like <Dude>. a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that you got that one there. What is that? Is that, is that Tribeland? That's the Tribeland, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the poster back here, we can see over my right shoulder, we've got the World Wide Wad, um, just you know, a cool little event that might be happening near you. You should check it out. But uh, <laughs> worldwide wide, and those are all your both the burnout and the uh, the other shirts, the tribe blend right. too. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. And so you get, and that just that's kind of neat too because I like this. This is a cool thing for us as a garage games goes. We are doing nothing with the t-shirts for worldwide wide. I don't I don't have to see them or receive them or pass them out or anything. They just show up at your door as an individual competitor. I like that. So even our event hosts who are hosting, they won't get a stack of T-shirts that they have to deal with and disseminate. It's when the competitor signs up, boom, order over to Wildlife. Wildlife fulfills, goes straight to their home. Which is really yes. just you being lazy because you don't have anything else going on. <laughs> exactly. Eric is the laziest person in the world. He never, I mean, he's I always got, he does half a thing. He never even does one thing. I'm, I'm upping. It's like 30 I'm, half a thing. I'm going <laughs> to, <laughs> be, because totally. you taking care of my t-shirts, I'm upping my sleep to four and a half hours a night now. Awesome. Thank I'm you. I'm glad I could help I'm you. I'm hopefully going to get back to six soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, yeah, totally. Uh, Eric is, uh, since I've been on staff, I can, I can definitely tell you that, um, I don't think that there's anything that he hasn't done and not just in CrossFit. Like he just, he tries to do a thousand things at one time. We test and the boundaries indeed. Yeah. And it's I, great. You've got what happens if yeah. you want something to start, but maybe you're a procrastinator, you just tell Eric about it and it's we'll like you're passing the football and he starts running with it. Exactly. That's <laughs> what we do. But you better be behind me because yeah, I'm going to throw, <laughs> throw it over my head for you to catch and run with it really soon. Cause yeah, I'm going to be onto the next thing. Yeah, absolutely. People so, in my office feel the same way about me, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need that, though. I think and that's actually something. I mean, if we're talking about business, you have to have those different things. You have mm -hmm. to have the guy that kind of runs with it. you got to have the people that kind of clean up after him. I mean, the, you know, the organization. Like, you have to have those different personalities because you can't have – um, somebody be all of those. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You really can't. Well, so. what, it's, it's funny you say that because the way the Garage Games started was, uh, was a moment of, of an idea um, in front of lots of people. That's all it took. There was about, uh, whew, probably, uh, we probably had about 80, 90 people, 100 people that were just uh, finishing up a competition. And I got up on, uh, on a, a plyo box and I said, hey, hey, in January, which it wasn't January, but we, you know, I thought, eh, maybe January. So in January, we are going to have garage games. I'm like, ooh, what's that? <laughs> it's going to be at this cool location. It's the outdoor YMCA. We're going to have two days of competition, a ton of events. It's going to be great. So don't, Miss that. And then I got off the blocks and uh, the, other three, the other three owners looked at me and said, what the hell did you just do? <laughs> what is this? What are you talking about? We've never said a word about this. I'm like, ah, that's a good idea, I think. Let's see what happens. And one of the guys, I won't, I won't say it. Yeah, Andy. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to say his name. Andy's like, dude, this is stupid. This will never work. What are you, I mean, this is a bad idea. It's going to cost us way more money than we're ever going to make. And he was right. He was that first year. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> But it's it's at least it's it's going the right direction. So so, so speaking of <laughs> events, that kind of that can bring. I, I really want to talk about going to these big events and like being a vendor. Um, I see so many people like in vendors at these larger events now. Um, just going down around to our events and other people's events. Mm -hmm. um, like I actually I saw you down in in Orlando this past year, uh, two different times. For different one was at regionals and then one was at another event. I think in Orlando and and I was um I was just always wondering like. How does that work? Like, I mean, do you make money at those events or is it more of a marketing thing for like later on? Like, how do you guys see that? The object is to make money. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, do people, do CrossFitters yeah. actually buy on the spot? They do. Yeah. Um, and we've actually branched outside of CrossFit a little bit to other type, you know, other general sports and also run adventure races, things like that. And we love our CrossFitters. That's for sure. Because yeah. um, they, they definitely come to shop and, um, you know. And in the name too. Exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but uh, yeah, the, I mean, it's a lot of work getting ready for an event. Um, and we've seen, you know, vendor fees rise over the past year. And, you know, and especially with competitions becoming, you know, more and more each weekend. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it, that's, 
and it, it's also a marketing opportunity for us as well, like you said. So it we look at it both ways. Yeah. So yeah. So how do you pick the events? Do you just say like, okay, we know there's going to be a buttload of people at this event, or like, do they shop you? Do you shop them? Like, like how does that whole process both ways. work? Yeah, we have yeah. a lot of people reach out to us as far as the events are concerned. Um, we also look, you know, for events, especially the larger events to go to. Um, so and we really weigh it. We, you know, what's the vendor fee? What you know, the number of competitors? Do you have an, you know, an estimate on the number of spectators? Um, so we weigh all of those things before we make the decision on the event. So, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, it's as a an event host, right? I've hosted a ton of these events over the years now. I can say that um, it's always a question for the vendor, and it's a question for the host too, because we don't like to burn relationships, mm -hmm. right? We want people to come and do a good job, and so it's always a question on our end. We're always thinking, okay, how many people are going to show up to this thing, and what can we tell our vendors? And you know, we want to limit limit the number of vendors in the same genre. Um, if we, you know, if we don't have the mm -hmm. masses coming, we don't want them to all come and say, well, that was really awful. I'm never going back to one of your events because there was eight of us selling apparel to 100 people. Right. I mean, come on. So I know, you know, on an event host side, we're always looking at those things. And then there's that whole, you know, where's the traffic going to be, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm always thinking that way. Okay, we got to really, you know, treat our vendors right. So where is this traffic going to be? And we're always trying to influence traffic in our events to make sure that we know there's a thoroughfare. You know, there's a way that they have to get from this point to this point. Okay, cool. We figured that out. Let's dump our vendors there. It's um, funny. A lot of people don't think about it, but, I mean, logistics is a huge part of it. It I is. I remember at GG1, you know, there were certain points where, you know, like people had to walk through and it was great. And then there were other sections where it's like, ah, you know, it's like back in the corner. So, yeah. like, those are the things that you have to think about. And even, you know, even doing this for a long time, it's still, like, it's still a big part of it, and it can still go so go good or go bad. Yeah, it yeah. can, and that's the thing is we continue to add new pieces to our events, you know, like adding a Garage Games 1, the expo side, people speaking, that whole thing. You know, you think, okay, well, this is how this is going to go, and then it does it. Right. <laughs> it changes completely. <laughs> You're like, well, okay, so that did not work out the way we anticipated. But, yeah. Um, yeah, in the end, I think what we've realized is that you guys do, or all the vendors, they show up with an intent to make money. Not all of them, I guess, but 90%. Their goal is to sell on the spot. And so that's one reason why we like the idea of um, uh, with our spectators at GG1, we like to try to push people to, to, to purchase early, mm -hmm. you know, because now we can say, hey, look, I know there's still time for you to prepare for this. It looks like we've got this many tickets sold for spectators. We've got this many competitors. So maybe you should be upping your total volume of inventory. You know, it's tough with the, the hot food vendors. Those guys, they always have a huge risk. If they're cooking stuff, mm -hmm. that dumps afterwards. And they're always like, I need to know exactly how many people are coming. And then yeah. I'm pushing people to sign up and buy their spectator tickets. And they're like, no, uh, you, why do you push us so hard? Because we want to know who's coming. So that's that's <laughs> a good point, too. Like spectators, like a lot of events do charge for them. A lot of events don't charge for them. Typically, it's the larger ones, obviously, like local events around here aren't going to charge for spectators. The bigger events do. And there's a lot of reasons behind that. Like when do you decide when you should start charging for spectators and what are the positives and negatives for that obviously the negatives being like people are like i don't want to pay to go to a crossfit event but why why would they like what's yeah i think the the key for a, an event that becomes a, a spectator fee event is when you know you've got people that are going to be competing that people want to see compete yeah mm -hmm. so when we pull in you know elite athletes and there's a, an elite level of competition going on you know that people want to they want to see that and they'll pay to see that and so for us the goal is when, when we put spectator tickets on things we want to make sure that that's more money that passes through as prize money that's yeah, always exactly. our goal yeah. we want to yeah. pass that through yeah. there's so, not a whole lot of people making money at crossfit still no it's like that top kind of level and that's yeah. it shouldn't be like that yeah like, i mean you I should agree. be able to go to a couple <laughs> local events a year and, and you make 20 30 grand if you win yeah you know i think like you're I, right I mean, I, I know that's what we're working towards, and that's, we, we won't talk about that right now, yeah. but it's, <laughs> it's, it's, in the, it's in the works. It's, but. Yeah, it's an interesting thing because we, you know, we've talked a lot about giving people, uh, you know, high elite athletes passes so that, you know, you, you earn this berth for the next 12 months, right? Go to the CrossFit Games, and boom, you don't pay for anything Garage Games because yeah. mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to. Because yeah. for you to pay to show up, now that's just a barrier for you already, and we want you to show up. Now, okay, so that's step one. Step two, how can we get enough cash to pay out 10 positions, right? Yeah. Because that's the key. Because, you know, what if you keep showing up to these events and the same two guys are winning all the time and you're like, well, I'm always second place, but I don't ever take home any money. Yeah. You know, so really it's like, ah, PGA, you know, pay, pay out you know, all yeah. the way down, right? Mm -hmm. 
So that's, you know, that's tough. And then, of course, we're, we're, we're in that whole process now of fighting to figure out how to get the judging up, right? Yeah, yeah that's important, especially local <laughs> events. Like, yeah. you go to regionals or something like that, obviously they've got all, you know, high-level people because it's, you know, they've got it set up to where there's only a small amount of people judging and they have that pool. Exactly. When you go to a local events, I, to me, that's what sets a good event apart from mm-hmm. a, yeah. a regular event. And I think that's something that, you know, when I first saw before I was ever part of this was really cool about the garage games is that, you know, they're accrediting people, yeah. you know, and like, I mean, it's a process and, you know, I'm sure some people kind of think it's a pain in the butt, but when it comes down to it, that's important because like you go to an event and you get somebody like, uh, what's your name? Uh, okay. Just watch them, per- make sure they go down below parallel. Yeah. You know, they have no, have idea, no idea what's going on. They might not even do CrossFit. It's just like yeah. literally somebody's mom. Yep. And like, and that that can ruin an event yeah, for somebody. It can, and it can on in just like that. Let's say you had nine accredited judges who are top notch, dead on, and you have one mom, yeah. right? That one mom, because now you have people that are getting reps that shouldn't. That can skew the entire thing. Yeah. And so yeah, so GG one this year we are um, we're paying 150 bucks to judges who are two day judges. So here's 150 bucks cash. You know we're gonna you come oh, to wow. two days. Oh wow! So it went up. Yeah, it went up. It went up because it was. Yeah, it was 50 bucks uh, last year for a day. So I know it sounds like I'm just feeding all the. I actually don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have even though I'm a part yeah. of it. There's so much stuff. I because yeah, there's focus so many on the pieces gym. going on yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, I just told somebody. I told one of our athletes that wanted to compete and they're going to volunteer i was like yeah you pay for the the thing and you'll get it back the next day or whatever yeah so we're paying 150 bucks and we know we're giving them we don't know exactly yet but we know we're going to be giving them a pile of cool stuff we know that's coming um we're just working those details out now i mean we'll put them up in a hotel as well we'll pay for that so if they're coming from somewhere else and they need to spend the night we will pay for the hotel so we don't want that to be an issue right at gg1 um, down in Biloxi just uh, a couple weeks ago, you know, I offered to pay 50 bucks for the day. And I think I got maybe four people who are accredited that I'm paying. And I'm like, man, I'm offering to pay 50 bucks and I couldn't get more. And it needs to be a hundred bucks. You know, so it's just, you realize yeah. that the money, you have such a need to get the events up, right? You, the money has to be to pay judges and that quality has to be to be able to pay out to, uh, to those top competitors as well. So it's, Yeah. You need to have more money coming in <laughs> to, yeah. to figure out how to pay it all out. It is because even, I mean, anybody that's ran an event, or let, let's say this, anybody that's thinking about running an event, don't put on an event because you want to make money. Yeah. Because that's that's not what it's about. Down like, the road. Yeah. Make that a long-term goal. You put on a CrossFit event because you love it and you want to grow some type of brand or something like that. Yeah. Because even if you're really efficient in throwing an event, there's not a lot of money in it. Yeah, that's that first two years of GG One, we we spent more than we we brought in, and I mean a big part of it was that we were investing in our equipment pool and you know getting that stuff that we needed, um, but but still the amount of work for that event, whoo man! Yeah. I mean we've been planning this one, we've been meeting uh, since July, so it's coming up in February. So yeah, it's six over yeah. six months worth of work for yeah. you know it's significant. Yeah. So coming from talking about the events and and kind of like the local event to the big event, I'm sure you probably try and go to the larger events. So what would be, what is the biggest change or the difference in these events for you as you've gone and you've seen these, like you've been at regionals. So that's probably, you know, the nicest kind of top level event or the games or something like that, as opposed to maybe just a single day event that maybe you go to, what is the biggest um, kind of factor between the two? Well, you Brandon Phillips, everybody. Hey, Hey. how you doing, man? (laughs) (laughs) Um, because there's so many events every weekend now, I, um, I think, like you said, Eric, I mean, really finding quality judges and, um, you know, just the volunteers working, that, that makes a huge difference in how the events run, you know, and, yeah. and when you're comparing a local event to, you know, the regional events, um, gosh, uh, Probably, I mean, just as far as attendance, you mean, as you know, the difference or just yeah, I mean, is that the biggest thing for you? I mean, obviously, you want as many as much traffic as you can, so mm-hmm. you have you know, kind of a larger pool to drag or to draw from, to actually sell and, right. and to kind of grow your brand. But would you say that? I mean, what do you feel is like when you're going to these events? What do you feel is the biggest thing that you're seeing that's setting apart um, the events as spectator-wise? Like, 
is it just, I mean, because it can't be random. I mean, is it because the event's been around for a long time? Yeah, or? I think that plays a big part in yeah. it. Um, I also think the venue plays a big part in it as yeah. well. Um, you know, we see a lot of times where people are asking if it's all outdoors or if it's inside. You know, we hear, you know, we hear a lot of comments, too. Um, yeah. People, you know, are coming to shop. Yeah, you hear stuff we don't exactly. hear. Exactly. Yeah, people want to feedback. talk crap to us. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Well, that um, depends on well, yeah, the event. Depends on you're right. That's, that's not true. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, you know, honestly, we I mean, we don't stay away from local events because of attendance or, you know, we think, you know, there'll be less traffic. Um, it's a lot of time. Okay, so we had a little bit of technical difficulty. It stopped recording for a second. Um, but that's okay because I think we're just about at the end anyways. But I do want, yeah. I do want you to finish what you're talking about as far as, um, you know, the spectators. Is it the event, how long it goes on? Um, is it, you know, where is it? Yeah, definitely. I think we, like I said before, we look at a lot of different things with the events. Um, is it a one-day event or a two-day event? Because um, a lot of times, you know, the day that the teams compete, we have an increase in business. Um, yeah. I think it's just more spectators there. Um, and we also look at the venue. We, um, and we really do like local events still, um, just mainly because we have less competition there. Yeah. Um, so we may be the only apparel vendor there or too, yeah. one of two. Because um, I know at so, regionals, that's like, it was just, it was a sea right. of just, I mean, people I've never heard of before. Yeah. And I know that's why they're there. Well, and we have an advantage over some of the other companies because we do have an affiliate program. And so that's really where we're able to gain more contacts, get our name out there. Um, so it is, you know, twofold for us where for a lot of those companies, it's just a retail, you know, opportunity. For I can them. introduce you to an affiliate owner here in about three seconds, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, well, yeah, on that note, I guess um, we'll go ahead and call it. And um, cool. it's been a, kind of a cool first uh, dry run yeah podcast olivia thank you for coming on thank you and i'm sure we'll have you it um is there anything that you want to plug before you go i think i already know (laughs) obviously wildlife.com um and you can sign on there as an affiliate um to get information and we'll be glad to work with you on all your custom branded apparel cool and what what is the next big event that you're going to be to garage games or not uh, we actually will be in Austin, Texas in January for the Fittest Games, so, um, and then after that, Garage Games won. Ooh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Rock and roll. All right. That's it. Thank you. Excellent.